next, and thankfully much, much better, we have Anastasia with Evolution. Anastasia, the name still bugs me, fuck. Anastasia, Anastasia, whatever. I don't care. I like this album. And that's not just because it. I listened to it after Fifth Harmony. In fact, I actually listened to it before, so whatever. <laughs> uh, I... You listened to it. At any point in t- this timeline, but you'd also listen to Fifth Harmony. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I think this is a really good album. Um, it's one of those cases of this is the sort of stuff that you want to see getting big and actually see in the charts. Unfortunately, that's probably not going to be the case because your parents were right. Life isn't fair. On the other hand, if you are in the UK, you may be able to find some of Anastasia's arms in Poundland for a quid. That is a good price to pay for it. Go buy that shit. Because... Even if you don't like it that much, it's still worth a quid. Yeah. Not this album, though. Earlier albums. Um, I mean, I would personally say that this is worth... This is actually worth buying. It's worth paying full price for. It is a good, solid, strong pop album. And I don't say that lightly. By any means. Um, I mean, the key thing to note about it is it has personality. Anastasia sounds as strong as she ever has. I mean, I was never particularly into her when I was younger. I mean, hell, I pretty much came out of the birth canal listening to metal. (laughs) Um, But I've always been able to recognise that she has a very strong, powerful, personality-filled voice. She does have a a very interesting voice. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um... There's no hint of auto-tune going on or anything like that. With the exception of times where the auto-tune is actually used the way it's meant to be used. For effect. Yeah. Um, Whereas Fifth Harmony presents songs which just make you feel unclean and wanting an acid bath, Anastasia presents songs that actually feel like they're addressing someone. They feel like they're coming from the point of view of a relationship. You know, it feels like it's actually telling a story of how a relationship has developed and grown and gotten stronger. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that is the impression that I got. Well, I'm just looking up. I remember my dad mentioned something about her like having cancer at some point. Yeah, she has. More than once. Huh. Died as a Crohn's disease at age 13. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, she's been through some shit. And it seems to come through in her music a bit. Hmm. Um, that's that's probably why it feels so personal, because it it is personal. Um, there also feels like, a, in some of the songs, maybe, again, this is me reading too much into it, maybe that is the intention, but in some of the songs it feels like there's a bit of solidarity going on with artists like Kesha and Taylor Swift. I can't believe I'm actually mentioning her in a positive, technically, although it's not really a positive light because of the subject matter, but but sort of a solidarity feeling with them in light of it coming out that there's been, in both cases, issues of sexual harassment and abuse and all that sort of thing, and being recognised and showing that she's there with them. As I say, this may be me reading too much into it, but songs like Stamina kind of feel, give that feel for me. Yeah, I can feel it. Also, Boxer comes to mind as well. Yeah. Although... Also one of my favourite songs on the album, I'd say. I really like Boxer. Which is kind of funny, because when I listen to Boxer, it gives me a bit of a Fallout Boy feel. Really? Uh, kind of, maybe this feels like Fallout Boy done right. Yeah. <laughs> Same kind of feel to it, but, you know, done by someone that's actually competent. Yeah. Urban. Uh, also someone not involved with New Ghost Bosses. Uh, shit. Um, one of my favourites is Higher Living, and that's a really fun closer to the album. When you've got an album that's very personal and very big and bombastic, you kind of need 
sort of, uh, you know, just a bit of a fun, cheery closer to the album. Strong closer is a kind of something that doesn't happen often enough. Mm. Like, mostly for an album to be like properly good, it doesn't. There's a lot of things involved, but having a strong opening and a strong closer is something that kind of just elevates it a bit further. Yeah, I mean, this opens very strong, and one thing that I noticed is. Unlike a lot of pop albums, um, which, well, every pop album in existence has the obligatory love song. There's quite a few love songs on this album, but not not your typical pop love song. And unlike a lot of pop love songs, it's not a simpering mid... None of them are simpering mid-tempo ballads. They're huge. They feel like how it feels to be in love and not simply when you're feeling puppy love but feeling strong emotional connection to someone hmm also you're talking about things nobody loves me better has super good music no love your favorite yeah nobody loves me better that's actually a good counterpoint to what i was bitching about with fifth harmony because that's the artist saying expressly that the subject of the song has provided the support and dedication and love that no one else has. And that makes it stand out. Because you don't really hear that that often, at least these days. You don't hear songs which are expressly saying, you have made my life better. No. Nah. It's usually kind of just generic, oh, love, love, sloppy love, yeah. I want to kiss you, I want to kiss you, love, love, kiss, sex, love. Or with some background music that sounds exactly the same as 5,602 songs that have been released in the last three weeks. Mm. Um, Another favourite for me is Boomerang. Again, because it's supremely fun. Mm, Boomerang didn't really stand out too much, but coming to Higher Living again, it it makes me feel kind of nostalgic. Yeah. It's just the kind of thing I had a lot in the kind of 80s and 90s kind of style of the music, so I really quite like. Mm. Um, on the matter of 90s music, uh, Reckless. I don't know about you, but that felt disturbingly like Let Me Entertain You. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it. It was sort of like, it's Robbie Williams going to do a guest verse or something. <laughs> Robbie Williams still around, I think he is. Yeah. Um, I think he released an album last year. I think I remember hearing it in relatively other recently, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, released an album last year. Yeah, fair. So... I'd much rather listen to Anastasia, though. Yeah. She's got a good voice. I actually really like her voice. It's something you don't hear often these days. Hmm. A lot of modern pop singers didn't have very similar voices. Yeah. It, it's it got that sort of, How to describe it? It's sort of that classical... Um, sort of jazz voice. Mm. Um, I don't listen to nearly enough jazz, but I have quite a few things that have kind of jazz influence, and I always really like it. So. Yeah, I mean, I I can imagine a lot of people sort of complaining that she sounds too nasally for them. I mean, she can occasionally have a bit of a nasal effect to her voice, but eh, it's negligible for me. It's not necessarily a problem. And also, I'm a fan of Calafino, and Hikaru has a pretty big nasal voice, so I can't really complain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nasal voices are quite hard to come by, where they actually sound good. I think sometimes it can just get in the way, but I have no problem with Anastasia's voice in regards to nasaliness. It kind of works with their tone of voice as well, so... Yeah, yeah. It's because she's got the attitude to back it up, so it doesn't really come across as nasally, so much as, so much as I'm going to kick your ass if you mess with me. <laughs> I suppose that's. I think that's why Boxer work. Boxer is sort of the Fallout Boy song done right, because with someone that actually has, you know, attitude rather than kids who think they have attitude. Yeah, she has the moxie to back it up. I never thought I'd see the day when I use the word moxie, but go figure. <laughs> um, but yeah. I really like this album. It's not a perfect album. I mean, it's very hard to come by a perfect album. But I like every song on this album. And I would happily go back to it. Uh, what rating would you give it? Um, I, don't know, I think you're more 
positive than I am, but I still give it a good solid of three, maybe three point five. Yeah, I, I I'd be sort of like three point five, possibly a four, hovering around that sort of mark. But yeah, I recommend everyone who hasn't listened to it listen to it. I highly recommend to go buy it. The only reason I haven't is I'm running out of space. <laughs> Yep, I, I would definitely recommend it. It's worth checking out. I mean, even if it's not a kind of thing, just give it a shot. You might like it. You might not. But it's definitely got talent behind it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I was. It, this this is basically the situation I had with Kesha. I was... Well, Kesha more so, because that was a, okay, what I've heard in the past, uh, I'm worried, but... You were highly praised for this album by two reviewers that I respect, so I'll give you a go. And this album I just I thoroughly enjoyed, and I'll probably actually check out more of her stuff after this. I thought you can also get her stuff pretty cheap in certain places, so... Yeah. So, next. I need the stamina! 